Hey Mel. So today you sent me a text which said, remember how you said one time over the phone, I'm not aiming for a tenure track job. I'm aiming for a platform for my beautiful ideas. Could you expand on that sentiment in 800 words or less? Nine point font, Helvetica, bold, italic. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And by nine point font, 800 words, Helvetica, I assume you mean a very quick Vlog. We're gonna keep this under 800 words. Okay, let's go. So when I lived in Kraft's house, I had this feeling, and it really was a feeling, this sort of like subjective like woo-woo. But I would walk in the door, and it would just feel like I was living inside a creature. And it was one of the most valuable, validating experiences I've ever had, this feeling of like, oh, I am a living part of this being, which is bigger than me. Being, right? What, what is a being? I don't know. It's just like some useless word. So then I took Forber's class and he was like, read some David Wilson and read some Strassman and Queller. I got this idea in my head, this like peer reviewed idea that maybe actually human society or a collective house or something like could genuinely be an organism. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go to grad school and I'm going to prove that idea. I'm going to prove with a capital P that human society is an organism. Why? Why would I think this is a good idea? I, it's crazy. I thought it was a good idea because there was this one summer that I spent at Fort Warner living in a closet reading about Newton's alchemy and the Philosopher's Stone and dumpster diving for all my friends every night and that is somehow what 20 year old me thought that being an academic would be like. I thought that it would be about spending your time dedicated to experiencing and trying to articulate really beautiful ideas and then sharing them with the people that you love. But of course, that's not how the academy works. The academy is built for specialists who try to make money by being the best at some specific thing better than anybody else ever has been in the history of people. And you're forced to be so narrow that you can't think about big ideas about society as a superorganism or like in what ways does the Ouroboros embody what it means to be alive. Like these sort of like crazy symbolic mythological ideas, the ideas that like give you these feelings inside you like, oh, that's why I'm alive, right? There, there isn't a place for those kind of ideas in the academy. This is what I have learned. It's taken me longer than it should have. That's just not what these systems are for. That's not what these institutions are built to do. So I'm at this impasse where science has this monopoly on truth, truth with a capital T, prove with a capital P. There's this methodology that is available for you to actually learn new things about reality. And that is amazing, right? And understanding how that philosophy works, how it has done the things that it does, that's really amazing. But the economy that we live in and the state of our knowledge currently is such that in order to really prove something, you have to go into this super detailed place and you have to really enjoy spending your life inside a fluorescently lit room making citations, jumping through all of these hoops to prove yourself to the various people that you need to prove yourself to that the way that you're thinking is valuable, fundable. And I get why that system is there. Like it's there for good reasons. It produces really good results. I'm running up into this problem where I am not so confident anymore that it is a system that can get good results from me, that I can do good things in. So that's why I said this thing, but I'm aiming for a platform. The internet provides us with this platform, and for the first time in human history, we have the capacity to speak our minds, and anybody that wants to listen to us can listen. Of course, this brings up a whole new set of problems, because anybody who wants to listen to us can listen, but maybe no one wants to listen to us, because they want to listen to the 10,000 other incredibly talented people on the internet that are saying really interesting things. Whether you work really hard to get a huge following on YouTube, or you work really hard to get a huge following in Nature or some other peer-reviewed journal, it's kind of the same game. It's just a different set of rules. We live in a big world, and there's a lot of ideas in it. And I want to share them. I want to devote my life to sharing the ideas that I find the most captivating. And I'm not sure the best way to do it yet. Maybe it's through academia. Maybe it's through this little box here. Maybe it's through some medium that hasn't even been invented yet. I don't know. That's what I feel like I'm on this planet to do. Try to convey the way that I see the world to other people because I think it's really important and really beautiful.